Welcome to IT and Digital Resources in Teaching Foreign Languages, lecture number 21, Blogs and Microblogs, Blogger, Live Journal. Outline for today's lecture. The first question, history of the development of blogs and microblogs. The second question for discussion, blogs, Blogger, Live Journal. A blog is a site or online journal published on the World Wide Web for discussion or informational purposes in a reverse chronological order. Blogs that interactively allow their visitors to leave comments and messages consist of web-based journals that are easily linked and cross-linked in online communities, or discrete entries or posts that are created by single individuals, small groups or multiple authors. Blogs are themed around certain topics and they allow bloggers to create social relations with their readers, to use unrestricted time and place, and to give personal responses to articles. While most blogs are textual, a blog typically combines text, images, videos and links to other blogs and focuses on specific areas such as art, art blogs, uh, photographs, photo blogs, videos, video blog or vlog, music, audio podcasts or microblogs that feature very short posts. The history of blogging 1994-1997 first blogs. Many of these original bloggers, despite not having yet earned that title, were the same people who first understood the value of the World Wide Web in the 1980s. One of them was then Swarthmore College undergrad Justin Hall, who created a site called links.net in January 1994. It was essentially a review of HTML examples he came across from various online links, but it was enough for the New York Times magazine to dub him the founding father of personal bloggers. 1998-2001. More resources for bloggers. The later part of the 19th saw an uprising in resources created just for bloggers. One of them, Open Diary, launched in October 1998 and became one of the most pivotal blogging platforms. Its name was a nod to its open. Community approach to blogging as Open Diary was the first of its kind to have a membership model that allowed members of the community to comment on the work of others. In 1999, though no one is quite sure exactly when, then programmer Peter Merholtz, who later went on to head up design at Group One, OpenTable, and Jobon, among others, shortened the term web blog to blog. It was part of the period that displayed an influx of blogging opportunities, with each platform attempting to boast its own unique set of features for a particular audience. In 1999, alone blogger which would go on to be acquired by Google, Live Journal and Xanga all launched. 2002, a big year for blogging. The early 2000s saw a few significant events within the blogging realm. Technocrati, one of the first blog search engines, launched in February 2002. That month, blogger Heather B. Armstrong was fired for writing about her colleagues on her personal blog Doos.com. While it's not clear if she was the first blogger to be terminated because of her personal website content, it sparked a conversation about the privacy and freedom of expression for bloggers. The year 2002 also saw the dawn of mummy bloggers, which largely consisted of mothers blogging about parenting aiming to create a sense of support and learning for their readers. Melinda Roberts founded the mummyblog.com, one of the original mom's blogs. She writes that April created a category that would continue to take storm for over a decade.
2003, the momentum continues. TypePad and WordPress launched in 2003 continued the trend of providing platform options to a growing number of bloggers. That's the same year that Live Blogging is estimated to have started. The Guardian was one of the first outlets on record to make use of Live Blogging during the 2003 Prime Minister's Question Time. The BBC refers to this blogging activity as Live Text and has frequently used it for sporting events. 2004-2005 Video and the Press Despite the earliest video blogs being recorded in 2000, it wasn't until the middle part of the decade that visual content really had the opportunity to take root. In February 2004, videographer Steve Garfield, who went on to be one of the web's first video bloggers, declared it to be the year of the video blog. Two thousand and six two thousand and seven the rise of microblogging and rules. The start of life in one hundred forty characters or less began in March two thousand and six when Twitter co founder and CEO Jack Dorsey sent out the world's first tweet. It was the introduction of microblogging, sharing stories, news and other types of content in the smallest format possible. Microblogging continued to gain momentum in February 2007 with the launch of Tumble, yet another blogging platform that encouraged users to be brief. It was built, wrote former CNET reporter Joss Lowenson. For those who feel they may not have enough content or time to write a full blog, yet still want to write and share links and media. Web 2.0 technologies have its own distinctive characteristics which can substantially assist the learning and teaching process. Web 2 technologies consist of a consider considerable number of web tools, including social network sites such as Facebook, Twitter, social bookmarking tools like Delicious and Digo, media sharing tools such as YouTube and Flickr, collaborative editing tools such as wikis, blogs, and a great number of tools that cross all of those categories. The content sharing functionalities of Web 2.0, including textual, audio and video format, has opened up opportunities for students to customize their own learning pace and maximize their learning outcomes. Collaborative editing tools such as Wiki have made collective content creation amenable and easy to control. In addition, social networking tools including Facebook, Twitter and MySpace have provided remarkable networking capabilities which have allowed for nurturing and growth of an online learning community. Microblogging social networks provide the opportunity to communicate worldwide while using a small number of characters. This is an apparent limitation that forces users to share only essential information when linking to the world with which they interact. These platforms can serve to motivate students by narrowing the physical and psychological distances separating teachers and students, thus increasing their confidence and engagement in the learning process. Microblogging social networks, also known as nanoblogging networks, are a tool that allows users to send and post brief messages. The options for sending messages range from websites, SMS and instant messaging to add ad hoc applications. Updates are displayed on the user profile page and are also immediately sent to other users who have chosen the option to receive them. Users can send messages only to members of their circle of friends or permit access to all users by means of the default option. Specifically, we centered on the use of Twitter as it is the most widely used in worldwide. Twitter is a real-time informational network, a microblogging site that allows its users to communicate with each other by sending and reading microtext entries known as tweets with a maximum length of 140 characters. This apparent limitation in the number of characters forces users to share only the most essential information when linking to the world in which they interact. Twitter has 175 million registered users worldwide 
and about 95 million tweets are written every day around the world. Microblogging tools have been used not only to facilitate in-class learning activities, but to support a more digital, flexible and free mode of learning beyond the classroom. Twitter is a microblogging tool that provides text-based content to be displayed on the user's profile page to update what they are doing. By allowing for no more than 140 characters in a post called a tweet, it enables users to publish brief text updates in real time as well as asynchronous communication. It creates online communities where interaction, discussion and collaboration can take place among a group of users at different geographical locations. Although this interaction and collaboration are often perceived as informal and even sometimes playful, scholars have been conducting research examining the unique educational benefits of microblogging and exploring ways of incorporating it into a variety of learning scenarios. Compared with Twitter, blogging has been used for education and as a tool for curriculum development for a longer period. As for individual use, blogs have features such as knowledge filtering, personal diaries and e-notes where students can use a blog to facilitate their learning at their own pace. In addition, Flatly stated that a blog is an effective interactive tool that could promote learners' collaboration and interaction so as to create more knowledge constriction. Social networks such as Twitter can be used to support teaching and learning in the higher education context in a number of ways. First of all, creating a class diary in which students and the teacher post class-related experiences and topics, raising the questions in real time during the class, indexing video, photo and audio content from other platforms, providing students class-related information, permitting students to share their opinions about the topics seen in class, creating categories or hashtags to identify messages about specific topics or ideas or from specific groups of people, posting public notebooks. How can teachers and students use blogs? Teachers can use blogs to publish assignments, resources and keep students and even parents up to date on class events, due dates and content being covered. Teachers can also use blogs to help students master content and improve their writing skills. Students can use blogs to publish their writing and educate others on a particular topic. Students can also create blogs for the chess club or the yearbook club, the football team or the upcoming prom. So the benefits of it is social skills, internet safety, literacy, maths, homeschool, ICT skills, classroom community, global connections, and etc. The top three blogging platforms for teachers. Your first step in blog creation is choosing a platform. A platform is where you build and publish your blog. There are many secure sites where you can do this for free. Here are the top three. Edublog.com is the number one site for education blogs. It lets you create and manage teacher and student websites. You can customize your design and even add photos, videos and podcasts. Learn more about this free private and secure website platform in the engaging edu blogging video. Kitblog.com is a safe, secure publishing platform designed for grades K-12. It's free up for up to 50 students per class. Some of the features include no advertising, privacy, password protected, no personal information needed from students, and simple to use so students spend more time publishing. And the last wordpress.org is a free blogging site and good choice if your blogs go public. There is no need to purchase a domain name. Every blog has WordPress in its title. For example, myblog.wordpress.org. Although not as simple to use as platforms designed specifically for educators, it has some good features such as numerous plugins that allow you to do almost anything you want with your blog. Eleven top tips to use blogs in the classroom. Once you have chosen your platform and the web builders tutorials and training material, it's time to start blogging. 
But first, here are some 11 tips for blogging in today's classroom. Guidelines and expectations. Before starting an outline for your blogging guidelines and expectations, check with your school for a written guideline. From here, you can develop clear goals, guidelines and expectations for you and your students. For example, your school may or may not allow photos of students on blog pages or they may require written permission from a parent to participate in a blog. You and your students need to know the rules before blogging begins. Guidelines can be published and updated right on your class blog for easy access by students and parents. Integrate classroom curriculum. Blogging can be used across the curriculum. From math and science to history and health, blogging is a great way to take literacy across the curriculum. English is for everyone. Blogging not only requires subject knowledge, it also takes good writing skills. Even if you are using blogging in a math or science class, you should set some time aside to teach a bit of writing and grammar. Just 5 or 10 minutes a class to go over one or two key points will make you and your students better writers. The how-to of commenting. The comment section of a blog post is where students can share thoughts and, op and opinions and have a discussion about the published content. Initially, it is a good idea to teach students the do's and don'ts of commenting. Start off by writing the first two or three blog posts and have students comment according to your set of criteria. For example, encourage students to contribute quality comments while discouraging put-downs and inappropriate language. Monitor comments and provide feedback. Be realistic. Building a blog takes time to set your site small. For example, start off with a class blog focusing on one topic where students can contribute posts under your supervision. Choose something the kids are passionate about or want to raise awareness about. For example, a classroom blog could be about an engaged species such as the orangutan or about the importance of eating healthy. Once a topic is exhausted, create a new classroom blog or another topic. The old blogs remain static but available for readers. By starting with a classroom blog, students build the skills they need to create their own blogs effortlessly. Read other blogs. Take the time to read other classroom and student blogs. This will give you and your students concrete examples of the finished product and give you ideas when creating your own blog. Be consistent. Blogging takes commitment. If posts are hyperly published, reader base and student interest will make likely decline. The idea is to keep building and expanding. In the beginning, set a goal of a post every two weeks per student and gradually increase submissions as the students get more comfortable with blogging. Plagiarism. Explain to students with that plagiarism will not be tolerated. Student contributions must be their own work. Don't post copyrighted images. Do post copyright free images, include a site here. Network with other bloggers. Encourage local and global collaboration by having students network with bloggers and follow other students' blogs. Although it is important to give students a choice when selecting a blog they want to follow, it is best to provide them with a set of criteria to help their selection. Dive into social media. If any of the blogs related to your classroom are made public, then you will want to get more readership by connecting your blog with social media sites, such as Facebook, Twitter and Pinterest. Word of mouth is always the best at advertising. Hang in there. As with most new ventures, there is also a learning curve with blogging. Maneuvering platforms to create one or more blogs while also monitoring student and class blogs can be time-consuming. But there is a good chance most of the students will be excited about blogging and will want to take on more responsibility, perhaps for some extra credit. For older students, you can ask or assign students to manage and monitor blogs, mediate comment sections. Give your pros a chance to shine by having them lead small groups that help students navigate the world of blogging. Be sure to rotate the students' roles. Okay, so in this video, I'm just going to try to get you started with Blogger. So. Let's uh, let's enter Blogger. Likely they'll have it like this, and let's say you want to create a new blog, you can go right here, and this is what it looks like when you get started. 
um, the title, let's just say we put and history. Okay. So that'll be your title. And let's say you want to make an address, math, sci. And that's available. Okay. So you've titled it, you've given an address, you can pick a theme. So create the blog. And you don't need a new you don't need a new domain name right now. This is fine. So here's your new blog. This is what it looks like, brand new. So you can get rid of this. And the first thing you'll want to do is you'll want to start with some post. So let's go to new post. And we'll title this first post. Here's your title. First post. Okay. This and we'll start with the first one we'll just publish and there you have your first post now um let's add let's add another one do new post again post this is my second post let's publish this there goes your second post and we'll even add a third one And you don't have to publish it real quickly. You can save it, um, preview it. Let's say you want to do a quick preview. This is my third post. Um, but let's just for now, let's just publish it. So now you see you have three posts right here. And let's just say you want to take a quick view of the blog, see what it looks like for now. And here's what it is. You've got third post, first post, second post. Okay, now it looks a little bare, but uh, you're always going to add to it. And here's your third post. Click on it. See, this is my third post. You can click this little share icon. You can share it on Twitter, Pinterest, email, things like that. Um, let me go back. Math, science, and history. So this is just what it looks like. You can take a look at any of these posts here. You can go back and edit them. You can view them. You can delete them. So let's say, you know what? I, I, I don't like what I have for my third post. I'll press delete. Are you sure? Okay. Now that's deleted. Maybe you want to edit your first post. And go, okay, I want to add some more to it. Uh, here you'll just update it. Okay. Let's say you take a look at your second post again. And you want to add a label to it. Okay, you can add a label. You can say this this will be a sample post. And now if you take a look here, you go to update. And you see at the side sample post. This is the little label that's been attached to it. If you go to first post, you can go to labels. And you can just add sample posts of that as well just by clicking that. Done. Update. Now the good thing with uh, Google Blogger, with in terms of education, you want you can use this as like a running list of assignments. Like exit tickets would be the best thing. They could just type in what they learned for class, and you can keep it as like a running history of what they've learned. Um, there's other things too. You can you can check comments here, stats, how many page views. Um, for the Google Certified Educator Level Two exam, they're not going to get in too deep into detail. If you want to just lay out. There's all stuff you can do here. Like you can add a, you see where it says add a gadget? This is, scroll down, add pages. Okay. Title this page, let's say page two. Whatever. Save. And don't forget to save the arrangements. Nothing is more important than having the freedom to express your thoughts and feelings openly with others. On today's social networks, however, you probably feel pressure to censor many of your true feelings and opinions because of the constant scrutiny of friends, family, and society as a whole. It's hard to turn off the self-censorship, but easy to lose yourself. But there's a place where one can still be themselves. Live Journal. 
On the home page, you'll find a constantly updated list of the most interesting stories from our blogs and communities. Just choose and read. Want to say something? Register under any nickname and post a comment. You'll never have to disclose your real name or any details about your identity. If you have a story to tell, engage in one of the communities and write. Lead a discussion and defend your position. LiveJournal's simple and clear commenting system will never let you get lost in the discussion. Proud of the point you made? You can always create a link to your comment or a thread of comments and share it with the world. If you have an intimate story to tell, start your journal and keep it private. And if one day you want to share your story, it will be up to you who sees it. Just your best friend, a group of people, or the entire world. Write a lot of interesting stuff and you will find yourself many new friends with similar interests. Follow your friends' journals to create your unique feed. Your feed is always chronological, ads-free, and we will never filter anything out. Your feed is yours and yours only, just like your opinions. Be alive. A live journal. Now let's sum up. Blogging has become a useful up-to-date instrument for teaching and learning English. Classroom blogs can have a positive impact on mastering learners' skills. Therefore, using blogs in English classes requires an effective implementation of blogging correlated with the learners' needs and interests. Blogging as a language learning strategy makes significant contributions to enhancing learners' cultural knowledge and cultural awareness about their target society. In addition, the use of blogs and gains learners' cultural interactions, competences, and exchanges. Second, blogging plays an important role in developing learners' interactions and communications in the target language. Third, blogs are effective tools for developing speaking, reading, and writing skills. However, with respect to speaking skills, while blogs are effective for developing skills related to conceptualization, brainstorming, articulation, monitoring, evaluating, self-presentation, and information exchange, they have no effect on fluency, accuracy, language complexity, or pronunciation. Here is the list of questions for discussion after our lecture. What is a blog? What is a microblogging? And describe blogger live journal blogs. Here you can see the list of references that you can use after our lectures and practical lessons. Thank you for your attention.